The Lord bless you all, amen, so much. How many have enjoyed being here today? You enjoyed yesterday and the day before? Let's put our hands together for mom and dad for putting together this conference. Papa and Ma Okwankwa. Come on, you guys, show some love to the bishops. Show some big love. Mike and Peace Okwankwa. And Bishop, no dancing like that for the next month, amen. You took your quota of energy, amen. Bishop and mom, we love you. You guys are phenomenal leaders. What a wonderful example in Africa. No scandals, no rubbish, nothing. For that, we honor you. God bless you, amen. And then can we show some love to Dr. Mensah Ottobel and his lovely teenage wife, Joy, the teenager, Ottobel. And then also, I'm married to a teenager, amen. That's why I run, amen. Chichi, stand up, let me see what you're wearing. Turn around, amen, turn around, turn around. Woo! Yeah, baby, that's money right there. Good evening, everybody, to all the visiting pastors, the ministers from Trem. Thank you for supporting all these years and staying with the idea for moving forward. And finally, to all of those that are watching online from around the world, thank you for being with us. The anointing in this place is absolutely explosive. It's so tangible. And I know that you can feel it where you are. I'm going to come to you for about 40 minutes. My presentation, the first part, is going to be a brief summation of what I did yesterday. Uh, there is a tad of a challenge following a very uh, line upon line, precept on precept message for the kind of presentation I'm going to be presenting to you. My message is entitled, Growing the Seed. And so my presentation will have some scripture readings, a few definitions, and then it's going to be very difficult for individuals, the sound was right the first time, it's going to be very difficult for individuals to follow by CD because of the kind of slides we're going to have, four picture cases that will preach the message. And so I'll try to explain it to those that might be listening by uh, CD in the future. Let's go now to Galatians chapter number 6 and verse 7. Galatians 6 verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, sows, that also shall he reap. Verse 9. Do not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Please tell three people, don't be weary in well-doing. That's only two, tell three. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if, 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 reaping is inevitable, if you faint not. Yesterday we summed up the reasons people get weary or the reasons people faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. In the season of fainting, it's a revelation that is the season to reap. Here's my favorite scripture for the season, Zechariah 8 verse 12. For the seed shall be prosperous. The seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. Notice the gender. The ground shall give her increase. Notice the gender. The seed is masculine. The vine is feminine. The earth, the ground is feminine, which means you have to then put a seed, masculine, into the ground, feminine. The ground will be pregnant with that seed and produce it. And the heavens shall give their endorsement. The heavens will endorse, give their due, the enablement for that seed to prosper. And I will cause the remnant of these things to all those that possess it. 
So there's five things here in Zechariah chapter number, chapter number eight. The first one, the seed shall be prosperous. Everyone with children, raise your right hand. Raise it high. Your seed shall be prosperous. Amen. I'm not even dealing with offering. We'll get to that. But your seed, your seed, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren will be prosperous. Amen. You shall be like Abraham and give an offering when you have no child. In Genesis 14, you have no child. But... Hebrews 7, Abraham gave that seed for Levi, who was born 150 years later. That's in the year 2163. We can't even imagine that. Your seed shall be prosperous. Say, my seed is prosperous in all the earth. Amen. So then let's look today at how does a seed grow? Six quick things. Firstly, a seed must be planted in soil. You must plant a seed in soil. I'm conducting an experiment at home to help me embellish this lesson. I've planted beans in cotton wool, in a glass. And uh, Thursday last week, just before Chichi went to London, uh, I saw the bean begin to break forth and put out its main root. We're not at the slides yet, guys. I'm in slide number five. Don't be excited, we still have 40 minutes. You can see her later. So the first thing you put a seed in soil, a seed on its own is just non-productive. It's a seed, as all of the dimensions of a seed. The second thing is a seed must be watered. You have to water it, water it. That's the washing of water by the word in our case. If you are, again, for non-believers, you have to keep on visiting that seed and put the kinds of nutrients around it. Number three, a seed needs air. Plants take in carbon dioxide. Human beings exhale carbon dioxide in general. This is just domestic. It's not too detailed or scientific. We exhale carbon dioxide. Plants take it in with light through photosynthesis, releases oxygen so that we can live. A seed needs a lot of light, light, light. Let there be light. There must be a lot of light. When they raise chickens, chickens don't sleep from the day they, as they start. In the, when they're growing them in masses, chickens don't sleep at all. They keep the light on. They just keep on feeding them. Proper soil temperature and six proper air temperature. Those six things are necessary components for a seed to grow. The power of a seed. Every successful thing must grow. Everything successful must grow. You have to grow a marriage, grow a church. You have to grow a business. And everything in God's world starts with a seed with an end product in mind. So how does a seed grow? Prepare the ground. Do the groundwork. Prepare the ground. When you plant the seed, it will grow. 1 Corinthians 14, 11, 10 and 11 says, there are many, many voices in the world, in the air, in the atmosphere. All of them have no meaning or significance until it's grabbed by a person who gives it expression. That's true both of good and evil. Every single satanic entity started with an individual who planted a seed in their heart and that seed grew and produced an entire world of its own. The same is true. God looks for one man, one woman, puts a seed in their heart. It could be the vision of a church, a business, whatever, whatever. It starts with a seed and grows into a harvest. So you prepare the ground, you plant the seed, you water the seed. Number four, you must remove weeds. Weeds. This is the coming into the rainy season in Zimbabwe, and so a lot of people will go and plant maize on the side of the road. We're not even talking about commercial farmers. It's just people who have a piece of land pass weekends. They want to do something, so they plant maize. And uh, isn't it amazing that you take a lot of time preparing the ground, 
putting the seed in the ground, even watering the seed. But you come back after seven days. Before the plant breaks through the ground, weeds are there. Weeds just grow. And if you do not remove the weeds, the weeds, your plant is competing for the same nutrients the weeds are competing for. And they'll suck everything that's designated for your plant. So you have to spend more time removing weeds than managing the plant. Then you have to deal with number five, predators, spoilers, and devourers. The birds are some of the uh, cruelest devourers. That's why we have a scare crow. It is an assemblance of a human being to scare a devourer away. Don't just take it for granted that the seed you've planted is going to last and survive. You have to be aware of devourers. And so even when we talk about Malachi 3 and verse 10, not trying to jump into the Nigerian social media debate on tithing first with yada yada, but God gives us a promise. Tithing, which is a universal law, when you tithe, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The point in that verse is there are devourers that have to be rebuked. You have to deal with spoilers, you have to deal with predators. So when Abraham planted his seed of a five-fold ministry covenant gift in Genesis 5, he spent a lot of energy chasing away the birds so that they don't devour his covenant and sacrifice. Genesis 7 verse 3, you have to keep the seed alive. In chapter number 7 verse 3 of Genesis, to Isaiah, to um, Noah, and says, I told you that in the ark there must be two by two taken in. But of a certain category of, of uh, species, the birds of the air must come in seven by sevens, male and female. And here's the reason, to keep seed alive upon all the earth. Your job, Noah, is not just to save life but to keep seed alive upon the earth. Why seven by seven? Because the birds eat seeds. Birds eat seeds. So inside their gizzard, inside their being, there will be pouches of all kinds of seeds. And when they pass out, when the seed goes through them, that will be the tool to keep seed alive in the earth. Because the flood is going to be so austere when that seed on the ground is washed, some of it will go into salt water and may be destroyed. So the purpose for seven by seven is to keep seed alive upon the earth. I declare over this august assembly that God is using you as Noah. You are a Noah to keep seed alive in the earth. Tell the neighbor, say you are Noah. There are things that you have to take on board to keep seed alive upon the earth. Say, I have a responsibility. I need some passion. I have a responsibility to keep seed alive on the earth. Seed, slide nine, is the door to life. The door to life is a seed. Every mother and father know that. The door to life is a seed. Genesis 47 verse 19. The people did not listen. The people did not listen. At any given moment, in any subject we're teaching, we have four kinds of ground. Wayside, thorny, stony, stony, thorny, and good ground. And so in church, I consider myself to be good ground. So when Dr. Audible was ministering so ably, uh, I was praying. I said, Father, let me be a hundredfold good ground in this message. But uh, earlier... Today we're talking about certain things and we're talking about the law. And in the law, I'm wayside ground because I'm not proficient in the law. So we, there are many areas in our lives, every one of us, in some category, we will be in one category of ground. But average person doesn't listen. How many ears do you have? How many ears do you have? You have to use at least one to listen. You have to use at least one to listen. Joseph is telling them, a famine is coming, a famine is coming, a famine is coming, a famine is coming, a famine is coming. 
And so when Joseph tells Pharaoh and convinces Pharaoh that prosperity is going to be seven years, Joseph said to Pharaoh, Sir, we have to manage favor. We have to manage favor because a famine is coming such as the world has never seen. It will wipe out even the memory of prosperity. And so Joe comes out of prison. Pharaoh gives him the best, second best chariot in the nation, changes his clothes, and Joe starts an infrastructural development program to store food and introduces a tax of 20% on all produce. And I can just see the people. What kind of juju does this guy have? that he persuaded Pharaoh to do this because in the first year there's prosperity. What's this guy doing? He's building silos for food. Second, third, in the fourth year, when the land was so productive, avocado pears as big as a person's head, oranges bigger than this building, they were saying this guy has some special kind of witchcraft he got somewhere from the north and he's using it here and he's gone Pharaoh. Now in the seventh year, when the famine, in the eighth year when the famine kicks in, People had eaten everything because they think this is just a one-off. Hurry up, Tudor. In the second year of the famine, they had expended all of their goods. We pick up the conversation here, which cracks me up, in chapter number 47, verse 19. The people that he told, for seven years, wherefore they said to him, we shall die before your eyes, both we and our land. Now look at the request. By us. <laughs> and our land for bread and we and our land will be your servants and Pharaoh's servants our only request is give us seeds that we may live and not die and that the land may not be desolate now look at Joseph I love this guy verse 23 47 23 then Joseph said to the people behold I have bought you <laughs> I have bought you this day and your land if you are a leader, you are going to have a leader. If you don't listen, somebody will buy you, they'll buy your children, they'll buy your little land, they'll buy your little small cassava, your little yam, they'll buy all of that. And then Joseph gave them seed and sent them back to the land that was theirs that he bought and got free labor. Because they don't listen. Pull one of your ears say, and call your name, say, Tudor, listen. Pull your ear, say, Tudor, listen. Bishop, pull your ear. Call your first name, say, Tudor, listen. Tudor, listen. Listen. Mark 4, 26. So the kingdom of God is as if a man casts seed into the ground and he will go and rest and sleep because... The seed is going to do its work out the ground. He won't know how it works. Night and day, the seed is going to spring up and grow. Verse 28. The earth brings forth fruit of herself. Herself. Feminine. Herself. You put the seed in the ground, masculine, the earth is going to respond and bring forth fruit of herself. First, the blade. Please say that. Then, then, the ear. Say that. After that, shout after that. After that, the full corn in the ear. And the last part of verse 29, because the harvest is come, we then go and harvest. So the process then is first the blade. So we have to decide, sisters and brothers, what we are actually planting. I think a fly has a turnover of life cycles of a week to 14 days. And so they reproduce so quickly. Now, you can be a fly by night because you want your harvest so quickly, or you can choose to be an elephant. 21 months pregnancy. People are reproducing, 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 but you must not be wary in well-doing because while they are reproducing, you are growing an effluent right in here. You can't even pronounce the word, but you are growing it. Right in there, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. And you see the flies everywhere, buzzing around, carrying all their rubbish. Ah, let them fly by night. You are going to drop 21 months from now, an elephant. In 1957, which was one of the best years ever, for all kinds of reasons, I was born in 1957, but in 1957, 
1957, they began the Kariba hydroelectric power program in Zimbabwe. And they built a magnificent dam, Lake Kariba, and hydroelectric power is shared by Zambia and Zimbabwe, some that is exported to South Africa, of course. The power lines they built from Kariba to Harare took years to get up, years. Bazalwani, it took years to build those power lines. But now, just a press of the button, shoo, power is there. It takes years to build the kind of seed you're building, to build the kind of power station like that. Years to lay the pipelines, years to lay the, the uh, electricity lines, years. But once it's in, the harvest is inevitable. Say, don't be wary. Keep on putting in the power lines. You'll have electricity every day. Amen. The fact that you don't have electricity today simply means that the seed has not grown to maturity. But the devil is a liar. The power lines are going up. Amen. Amen. Hello, microwave. Amen. Let's go to picture case number one. Slide number 15. Uh, slide number 15. Am I right? Or is it 16? That's a bean seed. That's a bean seed. It has no use if you don't plant it. This is the process of beans. Slide 17. The energy and the strength it takes for a bean to break through the soil the pressure per square inch on the soil is so incredible. Not just because of the weight of the soil, but because of atmospheric pressure on the ground per square inch. At sea level, atmospheric pressure per square inch is 14.7 pounds per square inch. 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's almost like six kilograms per square inch pressure. Now that bean has to push the pressure of the soil plus pushing through air pressure. So that birthing process is so tough. But the bean pushes through and then becomes a bean. Slide 18. There's a really nice example of how the bean works and comes through. Now, slide 19. Are you going to grow beans because you are, like what I'm doing, growing it in cotton wool as an experiment? I've been telling those beans in the cotton wool, hurry up and grow. I want baked beans and toast. I want baked beans and toast. Well, it's not going to happen because those beans will not be able to produce enough beans to put on toast. So now we have to keep planting. We have to multiply our seed. Say, multiply your seed. This is what the harvest looks like. That's what the harvest looks like, the beans. It grows now in the year, slide 20. Now, you can decide at this point, to make green bean salad, or you can decide to harvest on a big level. 21, here are women in Kenya harvesting beans. Working so hard, it's like 22, that's what the harvest looks like. Tell your neighbor, say, a harvest is coming. Harvest. Say, a harvest is coming. Harvest. But, but, for the kind of seeds you are planting, you are not going to be harvesting like our sisters in Kenya in slide 21. You are harvesting slide 23. This is how you are going to be harvesting. I need about a thousand women to clap your hands and say, this is me. Put slide 21, say, this is not me. This is not me. Slide 23, this is me. Slide 23, slide 21, this is not me. Do you know how many days it takes those women to do slide 23? What this thing is doing in, in, in a few minutes? This thing is doing in a few minutes what those women are doing in a whole day. I declare that God is giving you skill to harvest. Press down, shake it together, running over. Clap your hands if you believe it. Slide 24. Your harvest is going to need not hands but trucks. Shout, this is me. Shout, this is me. In fact, slide 25, your harvest is so big, you are going to need more than one combine harvester. Shout, this is me. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is me. Say, this is me. 
Look at the slide, slide 26. It's going to take a whole train. It's going to take a train to bring your combine harvesters. Slide 27. Say, this is me. Shout, this is me. I want the devil and his mother-in-law to know that Africa is not the same continent we were before. For 40 years, we've been planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds. We've seen the blade. We've seen the corn rise. But now it's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Money is coming in truckloads. I need about 500 men to clap your hands like you mean it. Come on, clap your hands. Give God a praise. Give someone a high five. Say, yeah. You may be seated. Picture case number two. Picture case number two, slide 28, slide 29. That's your seed. That is your seed. Say, God has given me seed. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. Say, Heavenly Father. Shout, Heavenly Father. Give me seed. Trust me with seed. No, not tonight. Amen. Not tonight. Amen. Not tonight. I'm going to Liberia tomorrow. I'm going to need my strength. Slide 29. Say, that's my seed. Slide 20. Slide 30. You can eat your seed. You can eat your seed. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't eat your seed. Slide 31. Don't eat the seed. I know why you are laughing. Because I've seen the Nigerians, when you see a chicken, you go crazy. <laughs> Slide 32. Grow your seed. Grow it. Sit on that bad boy. Slide 33. You can't make roast chicken from that. Grow your seed. Slide 34. Manage the growth. Manage it. Keep it from predators. There are hawks in the air. Keep it from predators. There are snakes on the ground. There are mongooses there. Protect your seed. Slide 35. Make sure there's a company to protect your seed. There is a factory I visited in Ohio some years ago. I was preaching there for some farmers. And this guy was a chicken farmer and producing eggs. They were doing a million eggs a day. Slide 36. One million eggs a day. Put that in your scramble. From one seed, a million eggs a day. Whatever you do, do not eat your seeds. Whatever you do, you must protect and manage your seed because your goal is a million eggs a day. I watched video clips the last two weeks of factories that are producing a thousand chickens an hour for food. Look at this. Slide number 37. As the conveyor goes, they're loading chickens. It's 1,000 an hour. Those chickens go through a, 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 a boiling hot room, steam room with hot water. When they come out on the other side, they are, their heads are removed, their intels are moved, and then as the, the conveyor goes, it's amazing. As it goes, necks are cut off into a thing. Livers are separated, hearts are separated, gizzards are cut and separated. And as it goes, a thousand chickens an hour. Go now with me to slide number 38. That factory is 24 seven. Slide number 39. Slide number 39. Go to slide number 29. Slide 29. Slide 29. Slide 39. Slide 39. Slide 29. Slide 29. Come on, Jesus. Slide 29. Jesus is the answer. Slide 39. Don't eat your seeds. Don't eat your seeds. This is where you are going. Be not weary in well-doing. That chick will grow. It will lay an egg. It will lay 12 eggs. It will sit on those eggs. 
I'm not even going to deal with incubation machines. You will get to that. But sisters and brothers, just remember that we're just talking about a chicken laying eggs or producing chicken. But the subsidiaries of the chicken industry, they grow chickens in wood shavings because of all the droppings or hay. So you don't even have to like eating eggs. All you can be doing is producing wood shavings to supply the chicken mamas. There's chicken feed. Then there's trucks to carry the chickens. Then there's refrigeration. Then there's diesel. <laughs> so one egg produces a colossus of industry. Do not eat your seeds. Slap someone and say, don't eat your seed, be patient. <laughs> Case study, hurry up Tudor. Case study number three, slide 41. That's a seed. Bicycle engineers in 1903 were experimenting with an idea that we could fly. That was the seed. That plane flew for 17 seconds at Kitty Walk. 17 seconds. People thought they were shanyad. People thought they were crazy to think that a human being can actually fly. And there were all kinds of side stories about, you know, witches and the mark of the beast and all that way back then. In fact, the Apostle Paul thought that Jesus was coming in his day. Because he said in, the, in Thessalonians, we which are alive and remain. We which are alive and remain. So when this was happening, people were saying, these are the signs of the times. What would they say now? <laughs> Ten years later, slide 42. From one seed, slide 42. They were producing planes like this. Slide number 43. 1939, from one seed. Slide 44, 2010. Slide 45, 2010. That is a jet breaking the sound barrier. That's the sound boom. Those planes travel 23 miles a second in full flight. That's 40 kilometers a second. How far is Abuja from here? 400 kilometers? Give me a word, how many kilometers? 600? That's 600, Nigerianly speaking, amen, the rates are there. So from here to Abuja, those things are doing 15 seconds. I'm leaving Lagos, and I'm going in that. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Zimbabweans can count. I'm in Abuja. <laughs> From one seed that was struggling for 17 seconds. Hurry up, Tudor. Slide 47, Bishop Mike's favorite pastime. The Dreamliner. The Dreamliner. I flew from London on Easter Monday to Australia in the Dreamliner. 17 hours, 47 minutes, non-stop. From London to Perth. We left in the afternoon, we flew into darkness, we came into light, we landed in darkness. Slide 48, from one seed. From one seed. Slide 49, from one seed. It gets worse. Slide 50, from one seed. Do not despise your seed. Get ready to breathe deep. Slide 51. From one seed. From one seed. This is not like Arik, this. <laughs> From one seed, slide 52. 17,000 miles an hour, 25,000 miles a second. From one seed, slide 53. That thing has been around the world twice since we've been in church. 
It goes around the world in 90 minutes. Around the world in 90 minutes from one seed. You will get there. Picture case number four. Except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. Slide 55. From one seed. From one seed. Like a rose trampled on the ground. One seed. This is our new, me new membership class at New Life Covenant Church. Next slide, guys. From one seed. That's our membership class. From one seed. Doc and I were there last December. From one seed. Next slide. From one seed. From one seed, look what has happened. Now my case study. The principle is right, the method is wrong. Let's go to Genesis 19, verse 31. I have eight, four minutes in which, six minutes in which I can do this. Genesis 19, verse 31. The backdrop to the story, chapter 13, Lot and Abraham, the herdmen have a dispute. Abraham says to Lot, choose where you want to go. Lot chose the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah because they were lush, and the old man went to another place. And then in Genesis 18, after the angels have a meeting with God, uh, and with God and the angels have a meeting with Abraham, God is talking to himself. I'm writing an article on the internal conversations of God. God says within himself, talking to Abraham, but he says within himself, can I hide the thing I'm about to do from Abraham, seeing that he will be a great nation, but I know he will teach his children knowledge and judgment after me, after them. And so God then reveals to Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities of the plain. Abraham says, you can't do that. If there's 50, 45, all the way down, all the way to 10. God says, I will not do it for 10. And in this room, we are more than 10 righteous. So we command the blessing of the Lord upon our lives. But when angels get to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot is sitting in the gate. He recognizes the angels because he's seen them before with his uncle Abraham. He invites them to the house. The angel says, you must leave now because this place is going to be flattened. Do not look back. And so they began to run. Mrs. Lot turned into a pillar of salt and they dwelt in the plains of Zohar in the caves in Zohar. Now, as time went on, and of course his daughters were married, the husbands didn't go with them. The daughters have this conversation, and the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old, there's no man in the earth to come to us after the manner of all the earth, which is sexual reproduction. Come, let's make our father drink wine. Let's get him drunk. We will lie with him. Here's the reason. That we may preserve seed of our father. The principle is right. The method is wrong. So they made the old man drink wine. He slept with his oldest daughter that day. He didn't know he slept with his oldest daughter. The next day, the oldest daughter said to the sister, it worked. They made the old man drunk. Verse 34. And... Uh, the Bible says, and she reiterates, that we may preserve seed of our father. Principle is right. The methodology is wrong. 1935, they made their father drink wine. He slept with his youngest daughter. He didn't know he had done this. Uh, thus, verse 36, both the daughters of Lot were pregnant by their father. Now, here's the key. The firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The Moabites gave Israel hell. Hell. The second one bare a child and named him Benami, the father of Ammonites. That gave Israel hell. If we invert this, if we apply the principle correct, you can get in bed with the right seed bearer. And you will produce an Isaac, a Jacob, a Joseph, and you will bless generations for years. My conclusion is this. I pray that God would give every one of us wisdom to be seed carriers, seed bearers, that God would use us mightily to impact this, our great continent. Father, we thank you tonight 
for trusting us with seed. We thank you for giving us seed. We make this declaration that whatever you are put in our heart, whether it makes sense or not, in years to come, it will affect the quality of life of human beings. Stand with me. I had a strange dream last, early this morning. I dreamt this morning, I was in a room, and this person said to me, I want to show you how you're going to raise money and how you're going to invest and began to draw a pendulum of pockets where money and seed comes. And on the other side, we saw the harvest that's coming. Outside of the United States, I can't think of a nation that has so generous as the Nigerians, right? Nigerians give, they, the Nigerians have taught us so much in terms of giving and honor and yada yada. Well, you have problems, but that too. But the things you have taught, the seeds that you have in the ground, it is impossible that a harvest cannot come. If I take an orange seed, or a banana seed, or a coconut seed, or even a human seed, the fruit doesn't look like the seed. The fruit doesn't look like the seed. So you cannot anticipate in your mind, I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, the manifestation of your harvest. I now want to step up prophetically. Before December the 31st, harvest breakthroughs are coming everywhere. They're coming everywhere. Your harvest will be looking for you. You will be not looking for it. It's looking for you. It's looking for you. Your phone is going to ring and it's going to be on the other side. Tudor, this is your harvest. Where are you living? I'm about to be delivered to you. I declare your harvest is on the way. For every seed you have planted, I declare you will not faint. You will not faint. You will not faint. Shut, I will not faint. Shut, I will not faint. Shut, I will not faint. Due season, I receive my harvest. Due season, I receive my harvest. Clap your hands, everybody.